may not be that smart and they may not be that pretty But they like to talk about Cardiff City It's the view from the ninny and with views from the ninny And not shoes from the ninny and the view from the ninny and... Welcome back to another episode of The View from the Ninian. After a crushing 3-0 defeat against Northampton in the Carabao Cup, Cardiff improved in their, their first league game of the season to lose 2-0 to Sheffield Wednesday. A leggy, uninspiring performance at the CCS has presented more questions than answers and requires a response quickly from Harris and his Cardiff City team. Joining me to discuss this and uh, a quiet week in the world of Cardiff City are uh, the usual suspects. Ben Price, how are you? I'm really good, mate. Cheers. And Tom Phillips, how are you? I'm not too bad, thank you very much. So uh, we we delayed the recording of this podcast by a day because uh, one of us, I won't name names, um, had a pretty serious case of food poisoning. Um, but I'm I'm happy to say that the the person in question has recovered, um, but is still dehydrated. He says, isn't that right, Tom Phillips? I've heard that's the case. Yeah. <laughs> His spokesperson has said that he's dehydrated. So we won't go into any more than that, but we're here a day late. Um, and I guess the, the, the place to start then is that, that tuna loss to, to Sheffield Wednesday. Um, what went wrong? Everything, really. Um, yeah. It was just one of those games. Looked poor, no creativity, defence was sloppy. Once again, if it wasn't for Smithies, I think we'd have probably conceded a good few more. He was probably, again, the only bright spark. Um, mm-hmm. It was really, really poor all, all all around. Um, Bakuna looked back to his sloppy sort of pre-lockdown, yeah. like right early season form again, look, just looking horrendous. That first pass, uh, that pass for the first goal is just unforgivable. It's basic football. It was suicide, wasn't it? He, he looked up, he found space where the only Sheffield Wednesday player was and played it right to him. I don't even think he looked up. I think he just hit <laughs> the ball, hoped for it, hoped it would go to the right place and it backfired massively. And then take nothing away, Windass scored a good goal and got absolutely clattered for scoring it. Mm-hmm. But, um, it's just basic stuff and again Bakuna's probably argue, arguably at fault again for the second goal because he loses his man um, yeah. it was just all the basic stuff that City was so good at doing during lockdown at the back were, got, was gone and there was zero creativity at all um, he uh, more probably had a couple of chances one of them yeah, one yeah, glancing header didn't he yeah one he probably should have done better those commentators were saying he should have scored but I think that's harsh but he should have done better with it I mean Tom, you, you, you listen to that Tom and uh, you know you talk about lockdown where you know during lockdown Nelson and Morrison looked brilliant together we had um, you know Bennett was back to his best at left back and everything looked really solid at the back even when we were swatching, swipping out people like Sanderson for Bakuna but that seems to have gone out the window doesn't it in the Northampton game the defending was terrible um, the second goal I think it was three opportunities to clear the ball and not a Cardiff player got to it against Sheffield Wednesday does, does that worry you especially with the players we've got in backup? I think, yeah, the second goal especially, just, it looked so easy for them. Mm. Like, it just felt like the ball was in the air for an age and we got absolutely nowhere near it and it was just free men everywhere. I think, mm-hmm. like, it doesn't help, though, when you've got midfielders in front of your back four giving away balls like Bakuna did for that first goal. Like, it doesn't instill you full of confidence. You've got strikers then running at you and, it, you know, you don't give your defenders much of a chance. And, but... You know, we, we've still got new players who've come in, they're in key positions and stuff. We did have another proper pre-season for them to gel, so let's not get too downbeat about it just yet. Give it at least one more game. I think Ben Price is already there. He looks pretty upset about the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, do, like... do you, I was going to say, do you agree with that? Give it another game, or are you, are you already losing a bit of faith, Ben? Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to lose faith. It's just, I was just thinking back to the stat, the, just before, just like five to three, that, you know, that pre-season, this is our year, <laughs> this is it, once again, this is it, and then... All out the window within 90 minutes. Oh, it was, well, within six minutes, I think it was, wasn't it? Six yeah, minutes it, was, it, was, a, it was a very early goal, it was a very early goal. I mean, is that... Go on. Brings you back down to earth, doesn't it? It's nice. Yeah, I, I was going to say, it brings you back down to earth with a bump, and I mean, th- th- does that... Does that the fact that the goal came within six minutes worry you, Ben? Because obviously in the post-lockdown games, we were, we were quite good at, against Fulham, for example, in the playoff uh, semi-final. We, we scored quite early, although we conceded straight away. But we were getting into the habit of actually uh, beginning games quickly. And we just seemed sluggish yesterday or the it Saturday. It felt Saturday. very early um, Harris reign. Sloppy mistakes mm. at the start and not quite getting going from the off. 
Yeah. Um, we seem to stamp that out during lockdown. Well, to be fair, not just during lockdown, but just before we seem to be hitting our stride with that. So um, I'm not worried about that. I think Harris will, what well, you saw from his uh, post-match comments, um, he's not happy. He's disappointed. Um, it wasn't a new Harris performance, was it? No. And I think he'll stop that from happening in the next game. I think there'll be a couple of changes to stop that happening. And, and Tom, that's the two games now, no goals. And I know against Northampton, we didn't have our star striker, Kiefer Moore, in, but he, he, he did come in against Sheffield Wednesday. But obviously, we didn't seem to, to trouble their goalie much. Does that worry you as much as the defence? Not as much. I think, you know, people are saying that we didn't create too much and we didn't put many balls into the box. But yeah, Morrison still had a head on goal. Um, Moore had a chance. So if we're... I know I'm, I'm clutching a little bit here, but like we created a couple of half chances without getting too much service. You know, if something does click, perhaps the goals will come. And like I said in the podcast last week that I thought it'd be a nil-nil because I thought we wouldn't create much. Mm-hmm. But it didn't account for us making two howlers. But... You know, you know, I think the goals will come. Um, I think we just need a bit of patience and wait until it clicks a little bit. What, what I mean, looking at the, the stats and, and the, the possession stats and things like that, is there anything positive we can take from it, Ben? We got, what, 62% possession. We had 400 odd, 427 passes, which is almost unheard of for a Cardiff City team. Is, <laughs> is, that, is that the things you'll, you'll take from this and the thing to build on going into the next couple of weeks? Truthfully, I don't think there's much to take forward. I think it was that sort of game where... It's one of those early season games. It's a bad performance. Just take it. It happened and move on. Um, don't on it. Use it as a reason. Um, my worry is, it's not so much something to take from it, but more of a worry is how poor we were second half. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we conceded both goals in the first half, but second half, there was just nothing there. Sheffield Wednesday weren't good. Let's make it clear. They had two good chances and they scored. Um other than that, they didn't really offer a lot. Um, it was just a case of we just had no creativity there. and That will get addressed. Um, it was clear Tomlin wasn't quite ready uh, mm-hmm. to play. Questions then asked why he made the bench. Why not just give him the week and then give him another bit of rest so he's not got that pressure and that question from the fans. But, um, yeah, it's just one though. It's just It happened, move on, don't dwell on it too much and try and put it right on Saturday. And, and Tom, there was uh, some comments around the fact that obviously Sheffield Wednesday, if you look at their stats, say 38% possession, they didn't pass it around as much. They almost tried to absorb us as an attacking force. Do you think that's something we're going to have to deal with this year? Obviously, we performed well in the post-lockdown, so perhaps teams are looking at us with a slightly different view. Is is the, the kind of breaking teams down in a different way going to have to be something that we, we work on? Definitely, yeah. I think teams know now that if they sit back, don't give us much space to break, we're going to struggle to break them down. Um yeah, it's, it's got to come in the next few games. I, th- I think it will. Like, like I said, like we've got a new striker in, we've got new midfielders in, we've got like Osatutu coming in as well at wide. We need these players to get a bit of time. We haven't had that pre-season like we normally have, mm-hmm. and it doesn't help that the one cup game we, we had we got trounced by Northampton as well. So you know, <laughs> it's, it's going to take a bit of time to build. But you look around. There's other teams who should be towards the top who slipped up this week. It's the first game of the season. It's a strange. Strange season start as well, so I'm yeah, not going to too worried just yet. I was going to come to that later, but I guess we could touch on it now. The kind of the look around the league, and I, I guess this is a question for both of you. But I'll start with you, Ben. Do you do you take comfort from the fact that teams like Brentford, Derby, Nottingham Forest, who are all kind of you know up there as favourites, all struggle to to get you know? I think they all lost. I think Brentford lost one nil to Birmingham. Derby and Notts Forest both lost two uh, nil to teams they should you know expect to beat. Does that does that give you comfort, or are you not looking at that at the moment? I'm not really worried what the teams do right now. The league will sort of find its shape. Um, we know what it's like with the championship, especially early on. Teams will beat any te- teams. Will beat no matter yeah. top form goes out the window a lot of the time. It doesn't really matter. Um, I know it's very cliche, but yeah, I think Cardiff just got to worry about getting sorting out their own performances, and then from there, build what other teams do isn't really relevant right now. It's sort of if you look at it, probably Christmas time. Then you'll start looking at which teams you need to worry about pick, picking up and dropping points. Tom, you're you're nodding there. Do you agree? Yeah, obviously you can't look at the league table after one game. Well, and if, if you do, it makes it makes the it makes our loss even worse. Really losing to bottom of the league, comfortably <laughs> bottom <laughs> as well. Yeah, so. minus nine. A long way to go to get back on form. <laughs> but no, I like. Yeah, I, I take a bit of comfort in it. It, it. We're not the only team to slip up. You know, it, it shows that it's not just us being completely useless. You know, it's it's going to take time for us to gel. Uh, who have we got next? Nottingham Forest. They yeah, slipped up as well, the didn't they? So, yeah. you know, but pressure's on both of us. Already. 
real six pointer already. <laughs> Make or break. Yeah, yeah. Sheffield Wednesday could then almost be six points behind us. So um, you know, they're really making making gains that they're at the bottom. Um, I, I guess we could touch on the new signings, but I, was, I want to talk about transfers a bit later on. I think Oho. Is it Ojo? Oho? I don't know why I said Oho. Ojo, Moore, um, and Otzi Tutu. I mean, Ben, what did you make of them on the debuts? Obviously, we've touched on Moore. He, he got onto a few headers. Um, but, you know, Ojo and Otzi Tutu, how did they perform? A bit anonymous, to be honest. Um, no, they weren't, like, horrific, but there wasn't too much there for you to stand out and go, wow, they look like serious players. Mm-hmm. Um, I think for Otzi Tutu, he looked a lot better. In the preseason game against Cheltenham, we sort of saw what he's capable of. He didn't really get a chance to get into the game on Saturday. So, um, again, like all the other players, it's not one to sort of... You can't judge them based off this, but it wasn't the sparkling league debut that either of them would have hoped for. Well, let's hope that they, they perform better on Saturday. Uh, obviously, we, we, we went, went to Twitter for some questions off the back of the game. Uh, we'll start with a question from our own Ben Price. Was it going through Swansea that gave Tom the shits? Tom, I don't know if you want to comment on that. You know, I had a surgical mask on, you know, I had all the precautions, <laughs> nothing to do with COVID, just getting off at Swansea for my, you know, my change. And it obviously didn't work. So I'll have to re- redress that if I'm going through Swansea again. <laughs> you've, learned, you've learned your lessons, you'd have to go yeah. again. Just no, to buy Kyle. Again. Yeah. <laughs> you drank the water, yeah. didn't you? Yeah, I know, I, n- I never learn. So it's cholera, not food poisoning. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. We'll, we'll 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 move on from that from from uh, talking about Tom's uh, bowel movements. Um, Lee Spear asked, um, and I'll come to you, Ben, on this one because obviously we just touched on the winger question. Lee Spear asked, "Do you put it down to Harris or the wingers? Why no one wants to cross the ball?" Um, I think it's down to it's an overall thing, isn't it? I think yeah, Harris should be putting the, telling the players to whip the ball in. But we've all play we all play football to be like to a standard if you can call it that, was after what I played tonight. But, um, yeah, we all know when you're down the wing, if you're on the wing and someone's in the box, you've got a big striker in there, why not whip it in if there's nothing else going? Yeah. Um, it's something that our wingers just aren't doing at the moment. It is really frustrating. When you've got someone with the ability of Kiefer Moore in there. And even like Morrison and Nelson were getting up and sort of, there were a couple of times where we could have whipped it in, they were in the box. It is something we need to look at. We don't want to become a team that's just relying on whipping it in the box like we used to be. But Christ, we've gone from one extreme of whipping it into the box with no one in there and hoping like Zahor or Glatz will get onto it to whipping it to not whipping it in the box at all. Yeah. It's a bit frustrating. Do you think do you think it's because we're playing kind of inverted wingers? Obviously they want to cut back inside and, and you know, when Murphy was playing on the left, he was cutting it back inside on his right foot. Do you think we should just play wingers in their natural positions and get them I to think, the byline? I think rotate. Um what we never seem to do is wingers swap sides. Mm-hmm. A lot of the best sides, if you watch a good top top end team, the wingers are if a winger starts on the left, he'll probably pay 35 or sometimes 15 minutes on the left and they'll switch to the right. Um, it keeps the defenders guessing, doesn't make it easy for the fullback. You've got someone different that's a mark and sort of confuses them. And it's something we don't do, which is frustrating because we know if, if we're playing Hoyland and Murphy, for example, we know they're both comfortable on either wing. Yeah. It's just why we don't do that, I don't get. It, maybe maybe it's a, 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 a specific instruction that get given. Um, it's, yeah, it, it is baffling. It is baffling, especially as Jimmy G asks, Tom, and I'll come to you on this one. Do you think Kiefer Moore will be alarmed at how few opportunities were created for the strikers on Saturday? Do you think that's coming but, into his thinking yet, or is it just a teething problem at the moment? I don't think he'd be alarmed. I think he'd be frustrated by that one game on its own. Like I think mm-hmm. it'll take a few weeks of that for him to start you know, worrying too much about it. And repeat myself for the third time, it'll, I'm sure it'll come. I'm sure we'll improve. We'll get used to, like, like you said before, we're not used to having players being in those positions in the box, you know, and hoping no. someone gets on the end of it. So, you know, it might take a bit of time for wingers to realise, oh, right, we've got someone who can actually deal with this in there. And, you know, we'll start to ping the balls in then. So, yeah, let's, let's wait and see. I hope so. I just think he's so handsome that I want him to succeed. And Hugo asks, anyone else think that it's worth trying Murphy at 10? I think we talked about this maybe in one of the, the last episodes. Um, and Ben, I'll come to you. He's one of the first who can get past people while dribbling and actually not a bad shot on him. I, I, I think he's one of the best finishers at the club. He showed that at times last season when he, he gets through, he can be very composed and he's you know, able to dink it over, put it round keepers, all that kind of stuff. Do you think, Ben, if we're struggling for a, not a replacement for Tomlin, but a a player to compliment Tomlin could Murphy be that person I think he's too lightweight to go in the middle I don't think he's got the physicality and gets shoved, shoved off the ball too easy to play as a 10 um, best 10s are ones that sort of put themselves about a bit as well as 
sort of with the trickery. I think he's got all the ability to it, but I think he needs to stock up or come a bit tougher to be put in that position. Mm-hmm. And to be honest, I think we just need to keep it, get him out on the wing and just get him hitting a bit of form. Because that's where we'll see the best of him is he is a natural winger. He's quick. He can run down that touchline. We all know he's good at taking on fullbacks. He needs to get that confidence back and that's where we'll see the best from Murphy. And Tom? If you're going to try it, try it soon while there's no fans there to get on his back. <laughs> like, do you know, do you know, like, like you said, he's a decent finisher and we saw that games like Huddersfield last year where like he got a bit of space put, and making some decent runs to the centre. So if you're going to try it, try it soon and if it doesn't work, just go for a plan B of putting Patterson, Glatzel and more on at the same time and just ping in the ball. Just lumping it to the box. Just it happily, watch it, no problem. You should have, if they were going to try it, they, they should have done it against Northampton, really, shouldn't they? Um, yeah. Murphy playing that's... there because it was a free hit. Free hit. Doesn't really matter. Glorified preseason friendly. Um, moving on from the old Twitter questions to the, the transfer market. Um, there's about a month to go in the, in the official transfer market and then there's a two-week domestic window, which... I don't really know what that means, but I presume it's um, clubs in the UK can trade with each other, you know, Premier League to the, the Football League and all that kind of stuff. There's obviously been a fair bit of clamour after the Sheffield Wednesday game for calls for, for transfers. And Ben, does the, did the performance at the weekend prove that we need to do more on the transfer market? Or is it is that, you know, again, is that a bit of an overreaction? No, I think it shows we do. I think we're desperate for a creative midfielder in the middle. Um, if Tomlin's not fit, then we've got no one. We're playing roles in a 10 uh, which I saw a few people comment on Twitter and Facebook, that he's not set out for a 10 or an advanced midfield position. He's better box-to-box, which I totally agree with. Um, we need that creative midfielder. We needed it in January. We didn't go for it. We looked at other options. And um isn't as fit as he needs to be, and he's going to miss a couple of games. We need that option. Have you got your eye on anyone? So, well, what I always think of is, because we always seem to be linked with him, was Windass, but then Sheffield Wednesday took him off, took him out yeah. of that. So, um, I'd love to see Johnny Williams at us. I just love him, but I suppose if you've got one injury prone, uh, yeah. and you don't yeah. want another one, but I'd, <laughs> yeah. love to, I'd love Johnny Williams at us. I think he'd thrive. Yeah. Well, it's quite, I mean, the, 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 the creative midfielder question, Tom, is quite a tough one, right? Because it, it seems to be the kind of position at the moment that's very overpriced in the market. If you look at, you know, people like, um, I really like Ryan Kent at, um, at Rangers, and he's, I think he's a bit of an arsehole. He's really petulant in what he does, but he's a brilliant footballer and he's exactly the kind of barnstorm and midfielder we want. But Rangers want 14 million quid for him. And we're obviously not in the market for that kind of thing. Do you think that's going to be a problem for us in terms of getting that quality in? Yeah, 100%. Like, we've got to rely on kind of plucking someone from the lower leagues, really, and hoping it works. Because, like you said, we're not going to throw that money at players. Like, we haven't done it for the last couple of seasons. We're not going to do it now. And I think we've just really got to rely on Tom and staying fit and you can't really do that like I, I think we, I think we'll have more business to come I, yeah. I think I'm surprised that we haven't had a little bit more already to be honest like I'm I'm not sure, quite sure where we're like completely missing players but we just seem quite thin on the ground and the players that we rely on are the ones that are crocked and you mm-hmm. know we've still got like Tomlin and Rose to get back up to match fitness and stuff but we can't keep relying on people to come back up to match fitness because if we have a couple of injuries we're, especially like centre back as well like we can't just rely on Flint and Bamba coming in because we have no mobility there whatsoever and we've got we know we well you know we've got nothing coming through in great like waves from our like under 23s and stuff so I don't know yeah I've depressed myself again haven't I <laughs> I was going to say you're painting <laughs> Operating a pretty again. bleak picture there. Oh, why, yeah. why, why did you bring up the under twenty threes as well? I've just, I've, that's just popped back into my mind about what. It's a good there. segue. That, yeah. that's, that's what segues are for. Well, I was going to say, I think uh, if you look, if you look back over Twitter over the weekend, there was calls that we need a new defensive midfielder. Um, obviously, with with Pakuna's performance and Marlon Pack seemingly out of favour, um, there was talk that we need perhaps a new winger. Obviously, there's a there's an obvious player missing from from the Cardiff ranks at the moment. I think we need a new creative midfielder and and. and as we said today, I mean, the fact that we, we're not playing, putting Flint on the bench says that there probably isn't that trust in Flint from Harris that you'd expect. And I, if we're going by today's under-23 performance, Ben, I think we lost 5-1 with Flint, Cunningham and Day starting. So does that, does that, is that another cause for concern? Yes, massively. Um, if the Swans under-23 side are doing that to three City first-teamers, and you've also got to forget, also got to remember that Mark Harris and Tom Sang were included in that lineup as well. And Baggin. And Baggin, who the club has seen. And Almeida. 
all of these players the club are seeing <laughs> as first teamers or future first teamers yeah. to be torn apart by the Swans under 23 side like that is embarrassing. Um, and yeah, something we really need to look at. We can't be relying on the youth and claiming the youth, our future um, is coming from the academy. We're not going to spend money because they're all there. When clearly, based off today and other performances we've seen from the end 23s over the last six months, 12 months, the players aren't there. There's a couple of bits of quality, but we can't be putting players in for the sake of it if we want to be challenging for promotion as well, if that's what Vincent Town wants. It's all shaping up quite nicely, isn't it, Tom? Yeah, I, th- I think let's not get carried away with the under-23s bit, because I think that's the difference between a club like Swans who've consistently invested into their youth academy for the last eight years, and we've done nothing. Now the tide is turning, so hopefully you know, we, we're getting a bit of investment and they're pulling the plug on it. So I'm not going to get too wound up. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to pay too much attention to it. it is, I, 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 I'm somewhere in the middle on this, right? I think... I think there's a lot of there's a lot of focus on the under twenty threes and the reserves when things go really badly and rightly so. But I think the fact of today that you know our number two goalkeeper because we've just sold Etheridge, so our number two goalkeeper was playing and he conceded five. Flint played, we conceded five. Cunningham played and we conceded five. It just something about that doesn't fill me with much confidence, especially when we have you know we're prioritising Sol Bamba as our backup centre half who showed against Northampton how calamitous he can be. Okay, I take it back. Sorry, you're right. <laughs> We're both right. We're all right. This is a podcast where we're all right. Um, and I guess, you know, the, 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 the transfer question and do we need another winger is a nice little segue into, obviously, the, the, the shock news that Nathaniel Mendes Lang has, has departed the club in, what's the word, should we say, mysterious circumstances. Um, obviously, we can't really, can't really go into detail on everything that's being said on, on social media. There's a lot of rumours flying around, but we won't, won't give them any legitimacy and we don't want to get in any legal trouble for talking about them. But... Ben, I mean, Nathaniel Mendes Lang, what, what, do, what did you think of him as a Cardiff player? Uh, hot and cold, wasn't he? Mm-hmm. Um, fantastic when the weather was good. The second he got the weather was shit, um, he went hiding. But mm-hmm. when, on his day, what a player. Fantastic, quick, direct, hit, scored an absolute screamer. Um, yeah, I really, he was the sort of player that on form got you off your seat and got you really excited. Just think back to one of his first games at the Villa. Yeah, uh, with Mantle, was it three 0 Yeah, ah, oh, unbelievable! One of the best date, one of the best sort of home debuts I think I've seen from a city player. I think he put John Terry in his ass a couple of times, didn't he? A couple he? of times, yeah. That was just made it that bit sweet. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I, I, you know, I think there were the, the Premier League year was almost made by him really with his goal against Brighton, which was, um, you know, put, gave us that little bit of hope of staying up. And then he scored two away at um, Old Trafford, and one of them was a penalty, obviously. But I think he was just again he showed how how good he could be, and um. Yeah, I guess it was more of a shock than anything, wasn't it, Tom? Yeah, it was just didn't see it came in, did you? And like, no, <laughs> obviously, but like, um, yeah, it, I, I will be interested to see why this has come about, and I think it might still be a while until we hear anything about it, to be honest. But you know, we, I think the only thing not mentioned on Twitter was war crimes about what he's done. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. Which is ironically, I mean, that's what it is. Him and Die Hunt have been yeah. planning a global takeover. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I, I mean, from from a legal perspective, I will say that that is alleged <laughs> war crimes. <laughs> 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 but, I, I mean, I don't even know if we, you know, given any kind of legitimacy by saying that. But yeah, I mean, I think, I think for me, I think, I, 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 I know where you're coming from, Ben. He was very hot and cold, but I think when he was hot, he was so good. And I'm just going to miss his massive shoulders and tiny head. Because he the was lack just of like neck. That's yeah. right. That's what I'm going to miss. Just yeah. I mean, and, and I think just to give him his due, let's 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 talk about our favourite NML moments. Obviously, we talked about the Villa game. Is there anything else that stands out for you guys, Tom? I'll come to you first. I thought it was the Brighton goal for me. I think just that false hope that it turned out to be in the end. But like, for us, for us on you, you know, winning away yeah. from home against like a, a relegation rival, and we thought, ah, uh, you know. We're going to stay up. We're going to do it. Obviously, they didn't. <laughs> and um, but you know, for that you know that week, it was a fantastic time to be a Cardiff fan. And Ben, your favourite moments? Uh, the Villa game for me. Just I generally thought we had the next incumbent of like Ronaldo at that stage. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> the way he tore past Terry, it was like watching the Champions League final all over again. Um, but yeah, it's just just a shame, isn't it? That's what the biggest thing for me is just. 
his career seems to be going down the pan in a very big pile of like confusion. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the best way to say it, really, because yeah, I think the, the confusion is the thing that, you know, I think usually you hear some rumours, but there doesn't seem to be anything concrete that's come out about this. So I am, I am curious to see what the, you know, what the, the long and short of it really is. And if it is war crimes, then quite right. If it turns out to be the Gary Medine Fight Club. <laughs> <laughs> One of the finest Carter City rumours. Would that not be the year. best thing ever if that's actually true? <laughs> Maybe, it was, yeah, it wasn't Gary Medine all along. It was NML. Mendes inherited it. I mean, allegedly, that Medine, allegedly, come allegedly, on yeah. yeah, allegedly. Yeah. That Medine Fight Club rumor is one of the funniest things I've ever read on the internet. Um, I can't, we can't really go into detail because, again, I'm scared of any legal repercussions that may come from it. But if you just search Gary Medine Fight Club, I'm sure you'll no, find... don't because it's on that forum we don't want to mention. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't search it, but um, it's it might be on Twitter if you look if you look hard enough on Twitter. Um, I, I guess uh, the final thing on the the NML thing is for me is. It's almost like an end of an era for a couple of our wingers, isn't it? Because obviously we, we signed Hoyle the season before him, and Nathaniel Mendes Lang came in. But and it, it kind of seems like they're they're both, you know, Nathaniel Mendes Lang has gone, and Hoyle's coming to the end of his Cardiff career. I think. Tom, do you do you see people like Ojo as long term replacements for him, or is is that their thinking? Do you think get him in now to see how he does for the year to replace them eventually? Yeah, possibly because I think there is a transition period around the corner. We're not quite there yet. So I think we need to be blooding people into the team now to step into those shoes because, you know, Hoylet's not going to have long left. Um, we, and we can't keep relying on aging players because we, we have, yeah. it is quite an old team still. So yeah, the, the young, we need to get some young blood in there quick. And not like we said, they're not, they're not coming through our academy. So I think our average age is the oldest by about 0.3 of the year in, um, in the championship, just out of Nottingham Forest. So yeah, I think that does need to happen. And they've got um, a number still, neither us. 700 so <laughs> maybe we'll get a doma back <laughs> maybe we'll get a doma back right let, i mean talking of nottingham forest god this is seamless we're going into a game against them on saturday 12 30 on sky so you know you don't have to pay your 10 pound for the club pass um what do you see happening on saturday ben do you see some changes do you see tom link coming back in to start or do you think we'll play it a bit safer still i'm gonna be a bit positive it'll be better because the guys have got a full week of training I think that's a big plus. Um, sort of, I think another fact we didn't give into with the whole start is we've had quite a few players away on international duty as well. So yeah. we had the team for the League Cup, but all these players out in international duty all over the world, it's it's a difficult work prep. It's not the ideal preparation. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully, a full week on the training field, sort of get the ideas, refresh the players' minds, get them back into it, and just a good week on the training pitch. I think will be the perfect way to get the season started um, I don't think we'll go wholesale changes purely because I don't think the squad's d- deep enough um, Tomlin might come back in for Baguna but you never know with Harris's team it also depends if he's fit um, I don't see many changes at the centre at the back um, possibly Cunningham for um, Bennett but if Cunningham played today will he be fit to play after being so long out playing another 90 mm-hmm. minutes um, I don't really. I don't think it's going to be too many changes. To be honest, it genuinely wouldn't surprise me to see the same eleven. Tom, what do you think? Same eleven. What changes would you make, if any? I would be tempted to do more and Glatzel up top, but you're not going to do that away in Nottingham well, Forest. Go, you? go, Mike Bassett four four two. Yeah, well, it will. Well, it worked for them eventually. Well, so, well, Benson and Hedges won it for them, didn't they? So yeah, yeah. But I just <laughs> want to see a score. To be honest, pretty certain. You know. Let's get a goal on the board. <laughs> I thought you were going to launch into all we are saying is give us a goal. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'd One like, of my favourite like, card of chance. I would like to see Glatzel and Moore play together, I think. I would like to see maybe Tomlin come back in um, and just keep Marlon Pack on the bench. All the way. <laughs> <laughs> keep him quiet. Uh, did, did, did Nottingham Forest worry you, Ben? I, I, I don't really know what kind of transfer. They, I know they lost, was it Matty Cash in the summer? But I don't really know if they've made any big transfers if you talk about it Ben I'll look it up on Wikipedia and then we can circle back as if I've done my preparation as if you're prepared already um, yeah they do worry me because I think they're a bit of an unknown quantity we don't know what you're getting from them they're still clearly hurting from the bottle jobs of all bottle jobs at the end of last season mm-hmm. psychologically how's that how's that going to play onto them yeah. uh, losing an important player like Matty Cash is huge mm-hmm. um and yeah, I think it's they're still trying to work out where they are and sort of recover as well. It could be two. It's one of those games. It could be two teams scrapping, and it could be an absolute horror show. 
It could be, yeah. I mean, I'm just looking at their transfers now. Obviously, I, I forgot they signed Lyle Taylor. They've got Jack Cole back in, uh, the Ginger Pele. Um, Tyler Blackett came in from Reading and a, a few other players I didn't know. They've also lost Costel Pantilimon, the, the six foot, I don't know, 10 Romanian goalie. He's moved on his way to, um, uh, to a Denlis ball in Turkey. Um, we, we always seem to have quite good battles in Ottenham Forest, don't we, Tom? We've had a couple of good results as well. That's the thing. Like we, we it was one nil last year, wasn't it? As well. Oh, I haven't just made that up, have I? Yeah, one nil. Yeah, but mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's always a battle because we're always like there or thereabouts. We're around each other in the league. Yeah, it's, it was like kind of replaced Leicester as our kind of like the team I hated from the Midlands because they just permanently <laughs> like just were battling for playoffs and stuff with us. But I'm a little bit worried about they, they look. They've got some like firepower going forward. Um, and with our defensive frailties at the moment, that could cause us a few issues. Yeah. But, you know, I think I think the best we can hope for is to kind of scrape a 1-0, to be honest. Scrape a 1-0 against Scabby Nottingham. Exactly. Okay. Do you see that? Do you see a win? Do you see a draw? Gen- I don't know how to call it. I really don't at the moment. Um, like like Tom said, um, Graben and Taylor come a field day if we play like we did on Saturday. But if it clicks, I fancy us to beat them. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll go positive, sod it. I'll go 2-0, see. Wow. Keith Keith Kiefer Moore to score? Kiefer Moore and Ojo, sod it. Two new boys. Tom? Uh, I'm going to go for nil-nil again. I just... I and who? And anyone to score? Scoring. No, no one to score. No, uh, no, no, no. I reckon, I reckon 2-1, and I think uh, we're going to see goals from little Joey Rowles and uh, Kiefer Moore. Um... So, you know, that's I'm relatively positive. No one's predicting a loss. It's a shame we haven't got Gunnison. He always seemed to score against Forrest. Did always seem to score against Nottingham Forest. And you can hear uh, his reaction to one of those goals in our other episode where we interviewed Aaron Gunnison. And he told us set it up and he hit it up. Great plug. <laughs> I tell you what, boys, we are absolutely motoring here. Um, <laughs> competent and- broadcasting. Competent broadcasting from the view from the Ninian boys. And um, uh, talking of competent right, broadcasting. Half time, pal. Your turn to get the ground round in. Off you go. No, you get this one in, mate, because I've got the beer sorted for later. What do you mean you've got the beer sorted for later? I got the last one. You know that's not how the ground round works. Listen here, bud. How does the offer of free beer sound? What do you mean free beer? No such thing, mate. Just go and get them in, man. Serious now. All you need to do is go to www.beer52.com forward slash VFTN and cover just £5.95 for the postage, and you'll get your first case of eight globally sourced Fresh as can be, craft beers delivered right to your doorstep. What I mean is, I've already got hours waiting for us after this, and we'll need them after watching this shambles. What's the catch here now? Who are these people? Beer 52 are the world's most popular craft beer discovery club. Each month, they send a case of craft beer from a different part of the world. Recent cases have included beer from the Alps, New Zealand, the USA, Ireland, Korea, and Germany. Bloody hell, that's not bad, is it? Yep, and if you do change your mind, you can pause or cancel your account at any time you like. Cracking. So how do I get it again? All you need to do is go to www.beer52, that's the numbers 52.com forward slash VFTN to get your first case of eight beers for just five ninety five. That's www.beer52.com forward slash VFTN. Sound? Pie with a pint then? You know I never say no to a pie. I don't know. It's not even the right segue, but we're, we're at the, the stage of the proceedings where we talk about the view from the Ninian Hall of Fame. So we introduced uh, this feature last week, uh, the view from the Ninian Hall of Fame. Each week, we all select something from the annals of Cardiff City. It could be a shirt, could be a celebration, it could be a particular transfer, it could be a seat you sat in in the ground, anything really. It's as esoteric as we really want it to be. And last week, it was the first iteration. Um, the results are being revealed exclusively on this podcast and on, if you saw them on Twitter, you can see them already. So, Ben, you came in with the 2008-2009 home kit. That got 19.4% of the vote. Uh, my Gary O'Neill loan spell in 2004-2005 got 11.2% of the vote. And, Tom, you take the first win in the view from the Indian Hall of Fame stakes with Michael Chopper's boot celebration, which took a, a very, very nice 69% of the vote. Nice. So... Nice. Congratulations. And we're on to the, the second uh, entrant from all of us this week. And I think, obviously, because you won, Tom, you can start. Great. So I, I've uh, followed suit with your loan spell theme uh-huh. from last week, but I've gone for Leon Barnett's loan spell. I think he's somewhat of a forgotten hero for Cardiff. 
you know, from that league winning campaign in 2013. Came mm-hmm. in at the end of the season when Mark Hudson was injured at a real, real key time for us. Linked up a Ben Turner and kept five clean sheets in eight games. I know, and I, I, and I just remember those images of him like being carried from the field and then never to be seen again. And I think a lot of people will have just forgotten about him completely. Like you have mm-hmm. to retire then at 32 and just, yeah, everyone's forgotten about him. But I, 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 he was just one of those players who just wanted to sign for us in that Premier League season. I thought he was going to do a job for us. And then, yeah, stayed in Norwich and kind of peaked it out. But I think he deserves a lot more credit for for that the key part of the season in 2013. You've made a, a, a fair case for him. Well done. Thanks, mate. Ben, you can go next because you came second. Okay. I'm going to set the scene. It's a Wednesday night. It's the 31st of March in 2010. 71 minutes in in a crucial game against Leicester City. Gabo G. Pesh decides to absolutely haul down James Vaughan. And we have the infamous, probably the most infamous red card at the Cardiff City Stadium. And what was the stadium? Less than a year old at that stage. Mm-hmm. It's one of the most iconic moments ever at the club for that for the stadium. So I'm nominating Gabo G. Pesh and his ball crunching rugby tackle for the view for the Ninian Hall of Fame. I mean, that is quite iconic. You've gone quite big there. I've, 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 yeah, you I've, banned I've, me I've, from I've, that one. <laughs> you are. I mentioned that to, to Ben. He banned me from using it. It's been used against me. <laughs> not, not I, don't think I, I don't think I specifically banned you from using well, it. It seemed, it seemed that way. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> so so far, Leon, Leon Barnett's lone spell and Gabor Gupesh's, you call it a rugby tackle against Leicester, are in the running. And I'm going to round it off. Um, I, 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 I changed my mind on this one because obviously I had a different one in there earlier on. Um, but I changed my mind when I was walking back from playing football tonight. And I've gone for a uh, die Marshall save against Swansea uh, from the, the famous 2-1 derby win when Michael Chopper, you know, slotted at home in the 90th minute. Um, I just think die Marshall was at the peak of his powers at that point. And I think, you know, the, the cross that came in from David Cottrell was completely missed by the defenders and Shecky Kuki glanced it on. And it was almost Schmeichel-esque in the way that Marshall kind of opened his body to be so massive and he just got his foot to it and footed the, the, the ball away. And I think, you know, at that point, Swansea were, were in the running to do the double against us. If they'd taken the lead there, they would have recorded the first double in um, the South Wales Derby history, which would have been an absolute horror show for any of us. And if he makes that save, then Michael Chopper can't go up the other end to, to score the goal. And I think Chopper's goal was so dramatic that people almost forget David Marshall's save against Swansea. And I just want everyone to recognise and, and remember how good it really was and how good he was as a goalie. Um, so I'm, I'm saying die Marshall's save against Swansea. Die the save. It's a big shout. It's a big week this week. It is a, big, a big week. week. I, think, I think, you know, we've got a sleeper hit in Leon Barnett. We've got an, two classic moments in uh, Gabor Kepesh and, and David Marshall. So I'll be curious to see where this one goes. I mean, if you were, if you were to make a bet now, Ben, what would you say? I fancy mine. Fancy yours, Tom? Not quite big. Uh, I'm going to try and on Barnett in it and hope for the best, I think. Otherwise, I think it's uh, <laughs> Ben Price all the way. <laughs> well, I'm glad you guys are confident. I'm going to go Ben Price as well. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll get the poll line now, am I? No, you're not going to win. I'm going to try. I'm going to orchestrate a digital campaign against you to you know, start targeting people with Twitter adverts to make sure they vote for me. The um, digital votes are going to do <laughs> yeah, yeah, the early voters are coming in for me. Um, so we, we, we'll put this post up. I think we'll do it Wednesday again because, you know, we did that last week and it's good to have a, a good little uh, drumbeat of things. So that'll go up on Wednesday. I have 24 hours to vote and we'll reveal the winner uh, uh, next week. We'll be keeping uh, a tally of this throughout the season and by the end of the year, we might do a, an overall Hall of Fame where all the winners get paired off against each other in, like, I don't know, a Cardiff City World Cup or something like that. Uh, and then we'll crown an overall winner. So um, that's that on the view from Ninian Hall of Fame. And, and that's the end of another podcast. I think, we're, we're, what would you say? that? How would you, how would you rate that one out of 10, Ben? Did you enjoy it? i say it's a solid eight. Solid eight? Yeah, where, where could we improve? I think I just need to be better, to be honest, boys. I think it's all oh, on really? me. Let the side down tonight. Tom's nodding. Oh, no, that was more to my own performance. You know, still dehydrated, yeah. So, you know, I think, <laughs> I think I'll peak next week along with the Cardiff City Strike Force. Well, what people don't realise, Tom shit himself twice during this podcast. <laughs> he has, yeah. He has. It's, um, we can even smell it through the screens. I hope this is <laughs> <laughs> You'll have to wait and see, mate. You'll have to wait and see. So uh, until next time, boys, Ben, thanks for being on the on the pod again. Thanks for having me. And Tom, thanks for being well enough to join. Oh, it's been a pleasure. 
and we'll see you next week. They may not be that smart and they may not be that pretty, but they like to talk about Cardiff City. It's the view from the ninny and with views from the ninny and not shoes from the ninny and the view from the ninny and...